Hi, I'm Joe Eager with Dow Agri Sciences. The next two bugs we'll look at will key uh, one of them to genus and the other just to family. And to get to family, we're going to use the, uh, the key that's in the uh, second PowerPoint presentation again. And so we go to the uh, first couplet in that key. Antennae four-segmented versus five-segmented. Uh, this bug has five-segmented antennae. And so we go to uh, couplet number five. And by the way, this bug is uh, urogaster integriceps, which uh, either had very few or no interceptions, uh, but is a, a really severe pest of wheat and other grains in the Middle East and, and Southern Europe. And so, so it's a fairly important bug. Uh, the next couplet, number five, Tarsi two, are three segmented. And you can see here there are three segments to the Tarsi. So, uh, Tarsi R3 segmented, and that takes us to couplet number eight. Okay, couplet number eight asks you whether the tibia are provided with large stout spines in addition to smaller CD, or if they're just provided with CD. Uh, these times sometimes strong, but lacking distinct spines, except possibly at apex. And if you look at this bug, it's got kind of it's got kind of spines. These are really more like teeth and, or, or uh, dent identicals on the, the uh, tibia. They're not those elongate spines. And what we're really looking for is those elongate spines. These little teeth are if there's just uh, uh, maybe you know, some, some stronger CD, that's not what we're looking for. So even though these kind of look like little spines, they're, they're, they're very sharp and look, look more like teeth. And so this one does not, in fact, have uh, the CD, uh, uh, the, the spines. So we go to couplet number 10. Couplet number 10, scutellum enlarged, covering most of abdomen and forewings and reaching posterior margin of abdomen, trichobothria paired. This one does have an enlarged scutellum. It does reach the posterior margin of the uh, abdomen. And we've looked at trichobothria before. If you look at this one, the trichobothria are, are paired on, on this bug. So what you have here is a scutellaric. Now the family scutellaridae. Uh, there aren't any recent keys to the genera of scutellarids. The best is Schutaten's 1904 key, and it's, it's for global uh, genera of scutellaridae. It's in French, but I've translated it, and uh, you have a handout. And with the supplemental materials is a copy of Schutaten's work along with the translations of the keys. Uh, and so we'll start with, uh, again, Schutaden, 1904. And uh, the first thing we'll look at is the key to tribes. At the time that Schutaden did his work, scutellarids were considered a subfamily of Pentatomidae. And so what we now consider to be subfamilies uh, were considered tribes at that time. And actually, there are several additional subfamilies now. But, but the keys still pretty much work to get you to genus. Uh, with, with the scutellarids and, and across the world. OK, we're in key to tribes of the, actually, this says subfamily scutellarini. It's actually a key to, to subfamilies now. But the first couplet, median furrow of meso and metasternum, limited on each side by an elevated carina. <coughs> and if you look at the underside of this bug, there is, there is a, a, a furrow, or a sulcus, uh, into which the, the rostrum fits here. But there really isn't any elevated carina on, on the sides, carina being a kind of a, 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 a elevated line or, or structure. And, uh, and so that's not present here. The second part of this talks about the base of the pronotum forming a continuous curve with that of the scutellum. And really, they're looking, once you look at the lateral angle, and you can see it's a fairly there's a, kind of a little bit of a constriction here, but it basically is a smooth curve. Uh, if, it, if this was not the case, there would be a kind of an indentation here or, or a depression where the scutellum and the, and the pronotum meet. So it's a, a kind of a, an arch. 
and then there's a third part. But again, but this this there's no con, uh, con, uh, counterpart. Some of these keys sometimes have additional characters that help you identify the bug. In this case, uh, you know, either one could have this this arch, and so you have to be careful when you go through these some of these older keys. Most keys nowadays, if they have one character here, they'll have it in the in the uh, in the other half of the couplet. This one doesn't. The main thing is is just that median furrow, and it doesn't have the the carina. So it's not an elvisior area. Uh, we go to number two, and I have an example. A couplet number two: body strongly convex above, not much below. Uh, head strongly declivant, uh, pronotum and scutellum again forming a continuous curve, and venter without stridulatory spots. Uh, what he's talking about, if you look at this, this is much more convex above than it is below. Uh, there is a continuous curve again here with the uh, pronotum and scutellum. The head is strongly declivant, it's angled down. You can see instead of, you know, like most bugs, it'll be kind of oriented outward. This one is, is strongly downward curved. And the other thing he asks about are the are states, venter without stridulatory spots. Uh, and this is the stridulatory spots he's talking about. These are found on the Pachycarini and a couple of other newer subfamilies. Uh, but when he says stridulatory spots on scutellarids, they're located right here on the uh, middle part of the, uh, the abdomen, and usually on uh, fifth, sixth, and possibly seventh segments. So let's look at our bug. Uh, our bug clearly is not as convex above as what we saw previously, and in fact, it looks like it's more convex below than above, and, uh, and that's the... Uh, the second part of this couplet, and so we have a we don't have a spherocarini. <clears throat> so we come to couplet number three. Couplet number three: base of pronotum and that of scutellum, each forming a separate curve. Okay, and you see pretty much that's pretty much what you see. Here's the scutellum; it comes up, it curves down, and then the pronotum starts here and curves there. So you've got that kind of a dip in between the the pronotum and the scutellum. And then the second part of this couplet, uh, posterior angles of pronotum located in front or outside of uh, the basal angles of the scutellum. And they're talking about these posterior angles over here, and they're really kind of in front of the base of the, of the, or the out, outer angles of the scutellum. Uh, so they're, that's, that's what they're looking for, that second part of that couplet. Okay, we'll look at our bug again, and again, a smooth curve. It's not, uh, there's no, no dip here between the, the scutellum and the, and the pronotum. And if you look at the posterior angles of the pronotum, they're, they're right in here. And so they're well within the, uh, the outer angles of the scutellum. So that's the second part of that, uh, of that couplet. So it's, it's not a scutellarini. And we go to couplet not, uh, four. We looked at the stridulatory spots earlier on, uh, on a specimen of Pachycarini. This bug doesn't have those stridulatory spots. Couplet number four asks whether they have the spots or whether they don't have the spots. And basically, this one doesn't have the spots, so it's an odontotarsaria or odontotarsini now. So that takes us to the key to tribe five, genera of tribe five. Uh, odontotarsaria or odontotarsini subfamily now. Uh, the first couplet, orifices distinct, prolonged, or not into a furrow. And the second part is orifices not distinct. Well, if you look at this bug, the, uh, and again, it's the met metaplural osteole, and that orifice is very distinct here. So that takes us to couplet number two. Okay, couplet number two. Connects of them large, distinctly covering the scu scutellum. Uh, and I think really what he means there is bordering or, or going around it. Elytra with costal border free beyond the middle. And so you've definitely got an enlarged, this is the con connexivum here, this, uh, 
the structure. It's just uh, outside of the tergum, which is almost always hidden by the scutellum and, and hemolytra in, uh, in these bugs. Uh, so they're definitely large, and they definitely border the scutellum. Uh, they do leave the elytra with costal border is free. It means it's exposed past the middle of the, the scutellum, and, uh, and it is exposed beyond the middle of that scutellum. So that takes us to couplet number three. Couplet number three, head triangular, acute in front, longer than wide and longer than pronotum. And orifice is not prolonged into a furrow. Well, you saw a minute ago the furrow associated with the orifice. This head is somewhat triangular, but it's not acute in front. It's, it's, it's pretty much rounded in front. And if we zoom out a little bit, it's pretty clear that the head is not longer than the, than the pronotum. It's much shorter than the pronotum. So this is not macroparinus, and we go on to couplet four. Couplet four, head transverse, its borders, and also those of pronotum presenting small teeth, strongly distinct. Orifices prolonged into a sharp furrow. Here we still have the uh, pronotum and the, the head, and there are no teeth anywhere is on here. So, uh, and you saw the, the orifice was prolonged into an elongate furrow in the previous uh, few minutes ago, so it's not morbora. We go on to couplet number five. Mesosternum presenting neither crest nor tubercles. Orifices prolonged into a furrow quite distinct. Okay, here we are looking at the venter. Uh, the, the mesosternum uh, does not have any kind of crests or tubercles. It's, it's fairly flat, maybe a little low carina there, uh, but no crests or tubercles. And the orifices are prolonged into a, a, a quite distinct furrow. So this is genus Urogaster. And we're not going to take this any further. Uh, I haven't found an acceptable key to European or to old world Urogaster. Uh, I think there may be one or two uh, out there, but uh, they're pretty hard to tell apart. If you've got something that looks like this, you've got probably a potential pest because there are several species of urogaster that, that are a problem in the old world. Interestingly, we also have a new world, uh, four species in the new world of urogaster, and none of them are pests. They're not really a problem. Most of them are much smaller than the European. 